Hey guys, what is up? It is Bibz7 here again, and welcome to another weekly update video. Uh, we did have patch notes this week for the most part, although there's a couple of announcements as well for the upcoming month that they included. But uh, that was expected as uh, the month ahead only had the three updates that we already got this month. But November was a pretty decent month, so I'm not too upset about that. Um, we should have the December month ahead coming up at some point this week, although December doesn't start until Saturday. Um, likely we will see the month ahead on Friday or something like that, so I'll be making a video on that as well. Hope all of you had a good Thanksgiving for those of you in the U.S. Um, I was away for the Thanksgiving, so I wasn't online for pretty much any of this event, which I'm at right now. Um, but yeah, that's uh, something I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, I did have a scheduled release while I was gone of the top five best bosses. It seemed like most of you did enjoy that video. I appreciate all your feedback and comments from that. Uh, I'll probably be doing worst bosses for my next one of those, but if you have any other thoughts or ideas for more of those, then let me know in the comments of that video or this video. Um, but anyways, I am doing this event, although I really feel like they po timed this quite poorly, as I'm sure I'm not the only person who went away for Thanksgiving and... I mean, I wasn't able to play pretty much at all and not get anything out of this event, although it's not quite over just yet. I think it ends at reset tonight, and I'm not sure if I'll be able to get... Oh, wow, I've already got 46% of the rewards. Well, I just got here like five minutes ago, and I had 0%, so maybe I will be able to get all of it. I don't know. <laughs> That's surprising to me um, that it's been this... I've gotten this much already. I had nine of the golden tools from like my daily keys, so I'm not sure if those were what made such a big difference, but uh, yeah, maybe I will be able to get them all, but still, either way, I feel like they timed it kind of poorly considering the five days it was going were pretty much the whole of Thanksgiving weekend for uh, uh, us in the United States. Anyways, uh, it, I believe it ends tonight, so if you haven't finished it, make sure you do so to get those rewards. Um, Anyways, on to this week's update notes. Um, they talked about all the stuff that typically comes during the Christmas and winter season. Uh, first up with the festive aura. will once again be around 30 minutes a day throughout December. Uh, 50k bonus XP. So not a whole lot of XP really to be had from that. I likely won't be using it at all because I'm already done with maxing and comping and all that. But... If you do want to get that XP, you have 30 minutes every day to get 50k bonus XP by using the Aura. They also announced the winter weekends for the next couple of months or so. Uh, so all month from November 30th to January 7th is uh, bonus player on port stuff. This is what always happens during the summer and winter weekends. You get 25 voyages per day. You get 30% extra resources or trade goods from the voyages and the barmaid special voyage on Saturdays and Sundays. An interesting thing about these winter weekends is apparently, according to Mod Shani on Twitter, you are able to get all of these benefits as an Iron Man, which hasn't normally been the case. Um, but the first weekend, which is going to be this upcoming weekend from November 30th to December 3rd, is the Elite Dungeons and Dungeoneering weekend. So double Dungeoneering tokens from both Dungeoneering and Elite Dungeons. So if you got your eye on a Chaotic or something for your Iron Man, definitely go and do some Elite Dungeons. You could even leech it to get the tokens um, from the Elite Dungeons. It's really, really fast uh, for tokens. I think 10k per mini boss uh, when they have the double do tokens. You'll also get double drop rate on lore books, 25% more Slayer XP from NPCs within the dungeon, a guaranteed extra material uh, from the tier 92 drop materials, so the ancient skills or the energies, and you get one free death per run, which is quite interesting. Uh, I wonder if that affects Hardcore Iron Man or not, uh, because it said Iron Man can benefit from all of these. Uh, I didn't actually see the tweet myself, but I saw a bunch of people saying that on Reddit, so yeah. And then within Dungeoneering also there is no XP penalty if you die. The second weekend from December 7th to the 10th is fishing and mainly deep sea fishing. So for fishing everywhere, the spots move around half as frequently. So that's, you know, always nice if you're doing fishing. But at deep sea fishing, you can go there regardless of your level. So that's going to be kind of weird to see how that works and what you're able to actually do. Um, there'll be more common encounters like the merchant and other things like that. The bottled boosts will last for twice as long. You'll find uncharted maps, fishing notes, and bottle boosts more frequently. 
There's a higher XP cap and it builds up faster during fishing frenzy. There will be no electrified jellyfish. Swarm fishing gives you an invisible plus 5 boost to your fishing at all times while you're doing it. And bait is 50% more effective for custom fish. So yeah, that sounds pretty cool. Uh, nothing too really overpowered there. It will be nice for there to be more easy to find merchants, I guess, if there's more common encounters. But nothing too exciting there, to be honest, aside from anyone being able to go there. We'll see what that ends up being. Uh, third weekend, which is the 14th to 17th of December, is Combat and Slayer. Charm drops give plus one charm. There's an increased chance of rare drops. 25% increased Slayer XP. All Slayer assignments are giving you a free VIP ticket. You can get 50% more anima in Shattered Worlds. 10% cheaper instances. Uh, you can loot raids once a day. Get a free uh, ability to choose your boss slayer or soul reaper assignments over the weekend. Increased chance to catch souls with your Ushabti. And an increased drop rate of grimoire pages from Solok, which is an interesting little bit. So overall, I mean, if you're not 120 slayer, you can do some slayer on this weekend. I probably will just be doing my normal stuff, uh, like bossing and whatever. But the fact that there's an increased drop rate of grimoire pages actually has actually been confirmed by Mod Ramen to be a test to see if they want to actually increase the drop rate forever, like actually increase the drop rate for everyone uh, even after this weekend because people complain that the pages are too rare, making the grimoire too expensive to use. So I'll be interested to see if they actually do end up going forward with those changes permanently after this weekend is over. Uh, the 21st to the 24th, so right before Christmas, is Gathering and Support Weekend. Nothing here really even sounds that great. Um, mining rocks and trees replenish twice as quickly. Um, you get a chance of getting plus one loot from Hunter. Honestly, nothing really great from that weekend at all, so don't even really feel like going through all of the different things. But Anyways, the 28th to 31st of December uh, is the mini games weekend, so you do get plus one Castle Wars Gold ticket per game, regardless of win, loss, or draw if you're going for trim. Double commendation points from Pest Control, double bonus XP from Barb Assault, plus 50% Dominion Factor, Dominion boss kills count for two boss kills, so I'll probably do some of that actually to get some more nips, um, might as well. Uh, double, or plus 50% produce points at Livid Farm, uh, and that's uh, double points from stealing creation as well if you're going for that on Iron Man or something but yeah that sounds like it's pretty good a nice variety of different mini games getting bonuses there and then from the 4th to the 7th of January the final weekend is the player owned farm uh, and well farming uh, b boosts so at the player owned farm there'll be improved chances of breeding shinies uh, happening there's an improved happiness and health from feeding, you get increased yield from animals, more beans from selling your animals, and an increased drop rate of animals from combat, which is pretty interesting, and honeycombs are more effective when used on animals. Farming across the board gets a 10% increased yield from allotment and herb patches, as well as a 25% increased yield from compost bins. So, yeah, they do these winter weekends pretty much every year, although they do change up a bit in between years, especially this farming one seems to be quite new. Um, but overall, I'd say you'd want to be looking at the Combat and Slayer weekends as well as the Elite Dungeons and Dungeoneering weekends, if you really, are, and the mini game weekends. Those are the three big ones, I would say. Uh, and you can review all of those uh, b benefits on the homepage if you want to uh, check them out yourself. Also going on all month is the Advent Calendar. So every day you log in, you get a free gift, which will be something like a star or lamp or something like that so you know just another incentive to log in and that's going to be I guess pretty much replacing the posty Pete event that's been going on for the past month so yeah um, other than that that is it for the stuff that's upcoming so yeah you guys can look forward to some of that um, the mining and smithing beta has also been extended for another week if you haven't gotten a chance to try it out and recommend you would do so uh, the patch notes, though, which is the, also important, uh, were pretty hefty this week. Obviously, it is a patch week, so you'd hope that they had a lot in the patch notes. But I'll go ahead and highlight the important ones. Uh, one here, Calgerian demons can now be damaged while charging their special move. That was really annoying before that you couldn't do that. So I'm glad that they changed that. Um, the tsunami ability now casts in the direction of your target rather than in the direction you're facing. So you can't, like... It happens sometimes at Telos if you mess up. Um, you could sometimes 
shoot your tsunami like in the wrong direction and not hit all the golems even though you're targeting the middle one that'll no longer happen although importantly the range is still at what it was so you have to be pretty close to your target you can't cast it from super far away but that's a nice change part of one of many changes that mod pie has been making like on his lunch breaks and stuff if you've been following it on reddit and twitter um, let me see what else they have. Nothing else really in the combat section. Uh, for the ninja section, and, and in a couple of places on these patch notes, they actually listed the same thing twice, which I'm not sure if that was just a mistake or why they did that really, but um, okay, yeah, it's gotten much slower, but I think I actually will be able to finish it if I do it with all these tools that I have, so that's nice. Um, but anyways, the ninja fixes, let's see if there's any, uh, one thing that I thought was pretty cool is you can now fill hidey holes with objects while you're wearing them, which is definitely super convenient. Um, other than that, there was a bunch of small tweaks that aren't too important here. Um, they changed the leave on ready options on the Dungeoneering floor complete interface to be bigger and on near the bottom, so kind of interested to see how big they are because they were really small before, which is a bit annoying. Uh, one big change that honestly surprised me that they actually did was increasing the pack axe timer from 58 to 64 minutes. And we all know the thing where you're using a yak and your instant still has a couple minutes on it, or you're about to go in for one final kill of the hour, but your yak is about to run out, so you have to summon a whole new one. And that was always really annoying, but that was kind of like the one of the pretty much the main benefit aside from two more inventory spaces of using the mammoth so I figured they would keep it the way it is to give the mammoth that kind of use or the reason to use it but they did change that so I assume mammoths will drop as, uh, in price as a result but that's a pretty significant change some people have been asking for for a while so I'm surprised to see they did it uh, similarly you can now disassemble Araxi fangs webs and eyes which people have been begging for on the reddit for a long time and Dragix has pretty much never said anything or maybe they even said they wouldn't be doing it but they finally did do it and you can disassemble any of those parts and you get a guaranteed noxious component one single noxious component from that and uh, yeah that's pretty crazy I assume that it will actually kind of even out the prices even more than they already are and it'll probably make it so that they're all profitable uh, at least a little bit at this point uh, hopefully that's pretty much the goal of this because prior to this the webs and eyes were pretty much always a loss to make so nobody would ever make them and now they were just stocking up in people's banks and you can now disassemble those to get a noxious component from each give you that biting three if you don't have it yet for you know pretty pretty much free uh, and then also you get like four magic parts or something from the eyes and tensile parts from the webs. I don't know what you get from the fangs because I'm pretty sure you still profit from the fangs. So no need to disassemble those. But that's a pretty significant one if you have any leftover Araxi uh, items in your bank. Um, other than that, there's a bunch of graphical. I never really read the graphical or the text fixes because um, I feel like there'll never be anything really significant <laughs> in those. But, you know, maybe one day I'll miss something huge in there. Um, and then there was some other stuff, which I am trying to quickly read through. I did read all these earlier, but I just want to make sure, uh, you know, I don't remember exactly all the super important ones. Uh, compacted silver jewelry will no longer degrade to dust, so you can recharge it like normal. Um, I think you could recharge it before it degraded to dust before, but if you missed out or you forgot, then you'd have to make a whole new one with the compactor. Uh, one interesting change for player owned farm is you can now choose which contract buyers will show up on your farm by talking to granny and that's nice because it was a bit annoying before if you had this multiple of the same tier of animal in your pens it was random which one you would get um, so you can now pick but of course that won't be in effect until reset tonight if you go and pick now because they don't change or well I mean, the medium ones only change every so many days, so whenever they're going to change again, they'll be the ones that you picked uh, from now on. So that's nice if you want to do that. Otherwise, you can leave it, and it'll keep going the way it has been. Um, other than that, I don't think there was anything else too interesting in here. Oh, yeah, there was this one thing. Uh, you can now actually visit other players' Uncharted Isles, which is kind of interesting, although unfortunately you can't skill there with any of their skilling options, but you are able to catch their birds or implings if you don't have them yet while they were there. So you can have like, kind of like at player-owned house parties, you can have 
Uncharted Island parties if you want, but not a super huge change, but just kind of an interesting little addition for people who may have cool islands or have a bunch of those birds that people want to spot for their uh, arc log. Um, and then, yeah, that was pretty much it. I'm pretty sure, yeah, I don't think there was anything else in those patch notes, but they are quite extensive, so if you feel like giving them a read yourself to see if I missed anything, please feel free. But, yeah, that's pretty much it for this video, you guys. I know I was just doing this event during this video, but, um, yeah, I'm still working on that long-awaited video, or that long-awaited goal that... Still, I'm not really too close to completing, but I am still going to be working on. Um, I will have the video for the month ahead coming out at some point this week, as well as an episode of the 120 Slayer series, so I can finish that up as it is nearing completion. And also, I will be working on the top five worst bosses this in, in RS3 for my next top five video, but that's not going to probably be out until the next week at some point. Let me know your thoughts on this week's updates in the comments, as well as what you think is going to be coming next month. I'm pretty sure we're getting the uh, Alchemical Onyx jewelry, as well as, of course, that new quest. So, other than that, I'm not sure what else is going to be in there. Let me know what you think in the comments, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.